of polling. Have Welcome you seen back to recently? Open Line. Yeah. Our topic tonight, medical marijuana in Tennessee. We are here with State Senator Steve Dickerson and State Representative Jeremy Faison. Uh, they are both sponsoring a bill that would bring elements of this to Tennessee. That's right. what we're discussing here tonight. Lots of calls to get to. We want to get right to Mark. Mark, thank you for hanging out on the line with us. Thanks for joining us. What is your question tonight? to all of you. Uh, my question is, well, my comment, first of all, is that as long as we have uh, one of the largest private prison corporations based right out of here, out of Nashville, literally less than a mile from Green Hills Mall, uh, CCA, uh, which used to be Correction Corporation of America, now it's called Fort Civic because of the negative press they had gotten during the President Obama's administration. But basically, as long as you have money and profit toward putting people in prison for small quantities of marijuana, uh, while other states are making billions of dollars off tax revenue of marijuana, there's no incentive for these legislators who are getting lobbied by poor shipping to do anything else but make it a criminal offense, which is really sad, and we're losing a lot of people that probably would want to move to Tennessee that are saying, no, they're behind the times, and we're going to look elsewhere. And I'll hang up and listen. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. So very provocative, mm -hmm. obviously, yeah. and, and, and I also think it's actually two subject matters. So, so the first one that, that he touched base on, and Jeremy and I are both heavily involved with this, is the criminal and civil justice reform. And, and I know we're here to talk about cannabis, but <laughs> since he mentioned, and, and there is an intersection to be sure. Yeah. Um, one of the things, and, and I think I can speak for him when I say, we're trying to identify the criminals that need to be in jail, the people that scare you, mm -hmm. the people that want to hurt you, that have murdered people, people that have engaged in significant felonious activity, or recidivist, what have you, people who get behind the wheel drunk and drive two, three, four times. The folks that are a menace to society, try to identify that subset of people, make sure that they are in prison as, as appropriate. Other folks, nonviolent criminals, people who should have a, a crack at the American dream, who want to get back out, get a job, be taxpayers. They want to get their driver's license back. They want to vote. They want to. Get, they want to. You know, send their kids to school. We're trying to figure out how to get those people in a position to succeed in our state. And he and I have carried several bills together. And I understand how the the war on drugs and that clearly are tied together. We're trying to move the ball forward. On the medical side, and and so so there there again there there may be parallel, maybe overlapping issues, but what we're trying to do is at least take that subset of Tennesseans who need this substance as a medication and make sure they are not subject to criminal penalty. And and so so he makes great points. Mm -hmm. Parallel crossover issues. I mean they're 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 closely related, but but they're also somewhat distinct. Okay, well, let's take another call here. We've got Catherine. You are live on Open Line. What is your question? Uh, yes, ma'am. My question is, and it's not really a question, it's a comment. I've been a nurse for 60 years, and I have seen the opioid addiction and alcohol addiction that's in our United States. And uh, yes, ma'am. My question is, and it's not really a question, it's a comment. I've been a nurse for 60 years. Getting echo. We're getting a little echo. The opioid addiction and alcohol addiction that's in our United States. And marijuana addiction. And marijuana addiction to me is not as bad, okay? Right. And I would like to see it legalized, even for my people that in my family have cancer. Okay. Catherine, thank you for calling. We appreciate it. You guys have talked about how you're seeing a lot more support for this right. issue. Uh, what are you seeing just in your districts and throughout the state as you've kind of done more research on this? Sure. So um, I started this process, as I said earlier, four years ago. And it was sort of literally dropped on my lap about February of, of oh, I'd say 2014. And they said, what do you think about it? I said, well, funny you mention that because uh, in my patient population I've had a lot of folks who have sort of clamored for this. They've said if we had an access to, to safe medical, medical grade cannabis we'd rather try that than a pain medicine. And so I was predisposed to this and, and I also think really to me it's a conservative bill. It's getting the government 
out of the doctor-patient relationship. Remove the government, let me talk to my patients, prescribe what I think is appropriate, or recommend in this case what I think is appropriate. And so as I, I started to launch, of course, I, I started thinking, well, gosh, you know, where, where are my constituents on this? And so, so I saw one of the early polls, and, and I represent sort of West Nashville mostly. It's, it's, a, it's kind of a U-shaped district, but, but my district was polling about 80%. And that was four years ago, and it's done nothing but go up and up and up. And, and when I've gone out, knocked on doors, met constituents, one of the things that it, it isn't legal. I mean, it, why are we not there yet? So, so I, I have tremendous support within the district, um, and I don't know. Jeremy knows the, the current mm -hmm. statewide data better than I do. So the interesting thing, we we've taken several polls, and took four polls last week. We took from extreme northeast Tennessee to Chattanooga area, to Heartland, Middle Tennessee, and all the way to Memphis. And we, we polled Senate districts, so pulling four districts, you're getting close to a million Tennesseans. What we found overwhelmingly, it was above 80% every place we polled that Tennesseans are ready for this. And, and, and it's coming. But when you heard like what the doc said, two-thirds of the population of America have access to this. Arkansas has it. In, Virginia is fixing to take place and, 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 and come online, if you will, having medical cannabis. We, we don't want to be 50 getting into this and taking care of our sick Tennesseans. Why can't we be 30? And we're, we're first in a lot of things in Tennessee. We used to be last. Through Governor has initiatives, we've really moved Tennessee up, and we're the most business-friendly state in America. We have the lowest debt. We're first on a lot. Let's be the first in the southeast to get this right. That, and, and the polls show us that Tennessee wants that. So. That's, uh, that's where we're both headed. I think we're at, what, 29 states now that allow cannabis for medical purposes. Right. The numbers keep going up. As we see more states adopt this, do you think that will contribute to an outcome here in Tennessee, just as we see this happening in other places? Well, I, I hope we get ours enacted in about a month. So, right. I, so, I, so I hope this is just a sort mm -hmm. of a hypothetical discussion, but, but the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. You know, it, at some point when 29, 39, 49 states, you know, have, have legalized this for medical purposes, it's going to be incumbent upon us. Right now, we have a bit of a migration. Some of the sickest patients in Tennessee, and frankly, some of my patients have left the state in order to have access to medical cannabis. Mm -hmm. that, that is an everyday event. And, and what I'd like to do is, is give the sickest Tennesseans the chance to stay here, get health care. This is, this is the health care center of the United States. I mean, this, this really is, this is, this is like the Silicon Valley, so this is just one area we need to play catch up. Okay, let's hear from another caller here. Benny, you are live on Open Line. What is your question? Hey, Doctor and Mr. Faison, I so appreciate you guys fighting for us people in chronic pain. I'm on disabled. Uh, I do suffer from PTSD, too. That's from my childhood being raped. But uh, the pain, uh, I got a disc. My lower back is herniated, and the rest of my lumbar is uh, bulging. I go to a pain oh, clinic okay. for the last 18 months, and uh, we're doing the shots and the pain meds. I'm on a lot of morphine and a lot of Oxycontin yeah. and a muscle relaxer, Doc. But right. my friend was on more than I was, and he is smoking it and right. doing the oil. I know it's illegal, but right. I can't go visit him because <laughs> right. he's smoking it all the time, but he's off his meds. He's off right. the pain medication, off mm. the oxygen. So Good for him. Keep Good for him. Rest people in chronic pain, right. and uh, I'll hang up and let Good. you comment. Yeah, so, thank you for calling. So I would say Benny's friend probably has better results than I would would guarantee. I mean, mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. what what I see this uh, feeling in the chronic pain roll is it's going to be another arrow in the quiver, if you will. And could we get patients off of opiates? Yes, we could. That's the the dream. But really, reduce them down, get them on a lower dose, have lower side effects, but actually have better quality of pain relief. And in fact, one one of the one of the qualifying conditions that we're considering is, is severe arthritis. And so, people who have widespread arthritis of spine might, under some circumstances, qualify for this. Mm -hmm. But 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 I I mean again I, I I'm sorry that he's continuing to have to fight around this and when his friend has, has had access to has had such good results. And I'm sure you hear stories like that from your patients every, as well. Every day. Yeah. Let's go to another caller here. We have Wayne. Wayne, you are live on Open Line. What is your question? Yeah, I appreciate the time you give me. Yeah. Uh, question I have, you know, it sounds real easy, you know, uh, marijuana can relieve pain, but they forget about all the adverse reactions. It's like a new drug 
Right. You know, it sounds like it's going to help the problem, but then you find out through lawsuits, you've got all these things you didn't know. Right. It's like opening up a Pandora box. Now, we should have learned the lesson with tobacco and alcohol, medical marijuana. I mean, it's going to open the door for the other drugs. I mean, it don't make sense to me. There's got to right. be a way to relieve pain without opening up the door for drugs. Right. Let me, let me, let me okay. Yeah, thank you for calling. Thank you. That's that's uh, that's a concern that I hear. But what I would like for you to do is do some research, and you're going to find out that every state in America who has had medical cannabis as an option for their sick people, that opioid prescriptions have dropped a minimum of 20 percent. What you're also going to find is that we're not opening up Pandora's box for good or bad. Cannabis has been prevalent in Tennessee for 150 years. We're not bringing it here, and as, as the doc said earlier, if you go to your local high school, the school that's closest to you, and hand somebody money and say, which could you get first for me, cannabis or alcohol? They're gonna be able to get cannabis. We're not doing that. And and I'm willing, if, if it was a risk, and if it was my child or your child, you would be saying, listen, let's take the risk. What can we do to bring my child relief, to bring my mom relief, to bring my dad relief? Because the sad part of about it is, is what modern medicine has done is an amazing thing for a lot of people, but it's also failed some people. And if you're one of the Tennesseans who's fallen through the cracks and cannot get help through conventional medicine, you're begging for us to pass this. And every state that's passed it, the sky isn't falling. If you look at stories and there's, oh, look at what all happened in Colorado. By the way, there's a lot more states than just Colorado who are doing this. The sky's not falling in Colorado. It's not falling in California. People aren't driving off the end of the desert and dying. As a matter of fact, I want to encourage you to do, do some research. You're not going to find one human being who is dead in America today and the sole contributing factor to their death is cannabis. Now, you can look and find right now in Tennessee where the sole contributing factor of somebody's death is pills or alcohol or tobacco or sugar. But you're not going to find anybody in America in the last 50 years who's died and the sole contributing factor of their death is cannabis, whether it's <laughs> recreational or medicinal. So when I hear that, oh, if we do this, the sky's going to be falling, I'm like, that, that, that's just something we've been told all our life. And just because you've been told something all your life doesn't necessarily mean it's true. Do some research and find out that this plant isn't the problem that we've been told. This plant was actually given us by God to help a lot of really sick people. All right, we will have much more on medical marijuana coming up right after this break. Stay with us.